Are we on? Can I start or? Yes, can start. Oh, start already. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, everyone, teachers and students of secondary schools in Terengganu. Uh, welcome to Jom Belajar SPM series organized by the Terengganu State Education Department. Now, as of now, it's English 319 session. I'm Puan Mahira Muhammad Noor from SMK Complex Gombada. Um, students, please bear with me. I'm going to speak English as much as possible so that I can help you improve your listening skills. This is very important because listening is a paper on its own now. Um, if you are unprepared for it, it may be a killer paper to you. Um, I'm not trying to scare you, but I just want to alert you. If you're weak in listening, you have to do something about it starting from now. So please listen to me carefully, but don't worry if you don't understand certain parts, um, you can always rewatch this video later. All right. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you basically what I have planned to talk today. Um, there are, uh, as you all know, um, 319 has four papers. Okay, and um, the first one is uh, paper one, reading and use of English. Okay, so for today, I'm going to touch on all the five parts. Okay, I'm going to share with you the technique of answering all the five parts. All right, and then the second one is paper two, that is writing, the same thing. Um, there are three parts. I'm going to touch on all the three parts. And I'll give attention also to um, cohesive devices. Um, and the assessment skills, okay, how you can score five for each of the, uh, what you call the, the, the subscale, okay, and then paper three is speaking, all right, for paper three, okay, so like this one, okay, sorry, I changed the pen color first, okay, so I'm going to do this one, this one, but speaking, um, all right, I'm not going to do on speaking. Okay, because uh, I think your teachers have already shown you the videos of the speaking test, okay, sent by the um, Ministry of Education itself. And the test procedures, the, the, the types of questions and how candidates answer the questions are clearly shown in the video. So I, I'm not so, um, what do you call, uh, um, <clears throat> worried about that. So this one, I'm not going to touch on it. All right, so paper four. And the last one is listening. Um, okay, for listening also, I'm not going to touch on it. Okay, um, the, the, the textbook uh, listening exercises are actually already good because they are geared towards the exam. So do use as many exercises as possible from the textbook, okay, to uh, improve your listening. So this one I'm not going to uh, touch, okay, on listening. So we have only about two hours to do on paper one and paper two. So maybe half an hour on paper one and um, uh, maybe about one hour on paper two. And maybe towards the end of the session, I'm going to mention a bit about our module, Module Intervensi Pembelajaran, MIP 2021. Okay, um, maybe i like to share a bit about what they are in the MIP. And hopefully when the school reopens, teachers and students can start using it. And maybe towards the end of the session or so, I give you some motivation on how you can improve your English in general. And if you have any question, you may post your questions. I'll try to answer them, okay? So let's start. Okay, um, reading and use of English. Okay, paper one. Okay, um, this is actually taken from your uh, TOV test. Okay, you already set for the TOV test. Okay, but um, I just want to show you how um, you can answer the question well, all right, 
um, so for example, the first question here, this is question number four, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, question number four. Okay, the purpose of, of the advertisement is to, okay, if you are asked to give the purpose of the advertisement, so that means you have to draw conclusion, okay? You have to draw conclusion, right? So this is HOTS, uh, high order thinking skills, all right? Uh, you have to read and understand, not only understand, you have to draw conclusion. For example, this one, okay. Um, Tolly ran a car, okay, read with me. Tolly ran a car. Uh, Tolly is one of the leading car rental companies operating in Kuala Lumpur, Penang and Kuantan. All right, and customer service uh, representatives, friendly personality, SPM with good command of English, possess a valid driving license, and the starting gross salary for the above position is uh, 1,200 ringgit Malaysia. If you are interested, you can um, contact Mr. Subra by email, blah, blah, blah. All right, so now the purpose, right, is not stated here. The word purpose is not stated here, okay? So um, you have to uh, draw a conclusion. You have to read and understand. Okay, the problem is um, what happened to many candidates um, when answering this kind of question, they get tricked uh, by the changes in the vocabulary. So that's why you have to have a lot of vocabulary. You have to improve your vocabulary otherwise this question is going to be a problem to you to answer okay all right for example okay the word recruit in a there's no mention of the word recruit and um it will be a uh, problematic to you especially when you don't even understand the word recruit but if you understand um it will help you, okay? So recruit new employees. So is there any mention of the word employees? Okay, there's no mention also, all right? And B, promote the company service, okay? Company service is mentioned, the word service here, all right, is mentioned. So this is the trick. Sometimes when the students uh, do not understand A, for example, all right? They don't find the word re recruit. They don't find the word employee. So they think that A is not right. So they go to B. So they just, you know, like make a wild guess um, because of the word service. All right. So service, the students may match with this one. All right. And inform that the service covers Malaysia only. So this is another trick. The word service is mentioned and the word Malaysia. So this looks correct because of the mention of uh, the word uh, Kuala Lumpur, uh, Penang and Kuantan. So Malaysia sounds correct here or looks correct here. Okay, so students might pick B or C, but not A. So you have to be careful. All right, when this happened, okay, for example, when you don't understand the word recruit employees, you have to make sure B and C, whether they are right or wrong in the first place. If both B, okay, B is not right, C is not right, even though you don't understand A, all right, the, the answer should be A, okay, because you are already sure B is not right and C is not right. All right, so why do we say B is not correct? Promote the company service, okay? What is the main idea here? Okay, the big um, title here is com customer service representatives. Representatives is wakil wakil, wakil service uh, pelanggan, yeah? So um, another word that's uh, related to that is um, the above position. Ini adalah um, jawatan. Yeah? Position is jawatan. All right. So there's no problem of, um, you know, like deciding whether this is right or wrong if you understand. Okay. So here promote, it's not, it's not promoting the company service. It's about the position, the jawatan that is being advertised. And then C, inform that the service covers Malaysia only. Okay, um, service cover, okay, Kuala Lumpur, Penang and Kuantan. Okay, this is quite limited. It's not the whole of Malaysia. Okay, 
Uh, so be careful. Don't see, um, you know, like once you see the word Malaysia, oh, Kuala Lumpur, Penang, Kuanta, uh, Malaysia. It's not overseas, but we're not talking about uh, uh, um, the whole of Malaysia. Okay, so now C is already wrong. Okay, so the correct answer is recruit new employees. So employees here, um, you can relate to the word representative. All right, representative. Um, Pekerja baru, new employees, pekerja baru. Recruit, kenapa recruit? Why do we say recruit here? Because that's an advertisement on, I mean, this advertisement mentions uh, the salary, okay? The gaji, okay? So, it looks like they're looking for new employees. They're looking for new customer service representatives. So, the answer should be A, all right? So, next. Okay, the second one. Okay, question number seven. The court yet? Um, okay, uh, the, look at the question first. Okay, when you answer uh, the multiple choice questions, you have only A, B, C here. All right, uh, but do read the question first. Okay, I suggest, this is my suggestion. You read the questions first. So at least when you uh, read the text, you can expect what you're supposed to uh, look for, all right? Which of the following statements is true about this advertisement? Okay, when um, the question asks on the true statement of um, a text of advertisement or article, whatever, all right? Again, you have to draw a conclusion. You have to decide whether this is the main idea or not, all right? So, Look at the ABC. The city lights are visible when it is dark. The private estates are located in the forest. The valley is far from Kuala Lumpur. So now you have nouns like the city lights. Maybe this will, uh, these are mentioned in the text, okay? And the word forest and the word valley and the word Kuala Lumpur, okay? So please read with me, okay? The courtyard. Serenity is an offer at the private estates of the courtyard. Here at the valley, uh, the air you breathe comes fresh from the clean surroundings. The soothing sounds of running streams, singing birds, and the blowing breeze give you a feel of a forest. Now you can see the word forest is mentioned here. Yet Kuala Lumpur, another key uh, phrase, with all the excitement it promises, it's close enough to bathe you with its light at night. So city lights, so lights at night. Okay, so which one is the answer? All right, uh, be careful. Like I said uh, earlier, don't jump um, to conclusion quickly. You really have to read carefully. Don't, you know, like decide there and there where you look at the word forest, look at the word Kuala Lumpur. Actually, the trick is there, all right? So here, <clears throat> the private estates are located in the forest. Is it located in the forest? You cannot say whether it's located in a forest or not. It might not be in a forest because the uh, key phrase is here. You, okay, give you, sorry, give you a feel of a forest. So that means it's not a forest. It's just, it just gives you a feel of a forest. Rasa macam duduk dekat hutan, which is calm, which is serene. Okay, the word serenity is there calm and serene, uh, apa? serene, calm, tenang, yeah? Okay. And see, the valley is far from Kuala Lumpur. Can you say that it's far from Kuala Lumpur? Uh, cannot because it's close enough. So this is, um, what do you call? Um, opposite, yeah? Opposite idea. All right, so what's left? So A, the city lights are visible when it's dark. So the problem here is when students do not have enough vocabulary, they might not know the word visible, okay? Um, so this is where the problem comes in, all right? So the city lights are visible. Visible means can be seen, yeah? Can be seen when it is dark. So can be seen here. Close enough to bathe you with this light at night. So bathe you. So that means you can see from this place, from the, the, the courtyard, okay, the lights from KL. 
So that means they are visible um, when it is dark. Dark here match with the word night. Right, so this is the answer. Okay, so next one. Okay, part two. Okay, part two. Okay, read the text below and choose the best word for each space. For each question, mark the correct letter A, B, C, and D on your answer. This one, you have a D, yeah? Not only A, B, C, okay, but also D. All right, so this is what we call a rational close. All right, uh, when I studied uh, the, the samples, um, Cambridge exams eh, for B1, B2, okay, most of the, what do you call the blanks, um given in this question um are of nouns and not sorry not nouns uh are of uh what you call a vocabulary okay there um there are a few uh tests on grammar and then the rest are vocabulary so still again you need a lot of vocabulary in order for you to excel in this part okay and okay take a look at uh, this question, how can we uh, decide the correct answer, okay, based on the context. So here, I, I just take only the first paragraph, actually, um, for this particular uh, question, you really have to understand from the beginning to the end so that you can um, uh, look at the, 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 the tenses used and you have to look at the context. Okay, all right, so tense all right. for here, okay, how do you uh, determine the, 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 the tense, okay? You look at the verb, is, flows, right? Can be, okay, go for the verbs, go for the verbs. Is again, so this shows it is in present simple, okay? Present simple tense, right, in present simple, right? So you might, need the knowledge on present simple in order to answer this question. But for number nine, number 10, it's not about present simple. Okay, so we'll see what. All right, so starting from here, a flowing body of water that is smaller than a river is called a stream, creek or brook. Some rivers flow year round while something flow only during certain seasons. Okay, now here, you can decide, okay, after, look at the word before and after the blank, okay? So, this is the blank, okay, before and after the, so, while something flow, so flow here, there is no S. So, that means this might be a noun in plural form, all right? Might be a noun in plural form. So, the word another is for singular. Right, more something. When you have more, you must have more something. Okay, but um, there's no something there. There's no noun there. So definitely this is wrong. This is wrong. Okay, and the same thing with most. Most what? You must have more something here. Most plus adjective, more plus adjective, all right? So what's left? Others, others with the S. I'm talking about when you don't really, um, I mean, like you are not really sure of the the answer of the the nouns that's supposed to be there in the uh, uh, blank, okay? So you just go for the S. But if all the options like A, B, and also D has S, then that's another problem. But here, you can see from, <clears throat> from the S. But if you really understand the sentence, you know, you don't really have to guess, to, to make wild guess, to, to look at the plural form and all, because you already understood. But I'm talking about when you don't understand, you don't really know how to decide, okay, whether this is the answer or not. So here are the Yang lain-lain maksud dia. Some rivers. Lawan dia apa kat sini? Okay. Some rivers. Okay. While others. Alright. While others. So, this is compared to this one. Alright. Okay. So, others. Yang lain-lain. So, the answer is C. Okay. Number 10. The largest rivers can be thousands of miles something. Alright. So, what's the key here? Okay. So, look at the words before that. 
thousands of miles. So you know what miles is? Now, like in our country, we use kilometers. Miles is batu. Yeah, but it's also show distance. It's a distance unit. Yeah, mile is a distance unit. Unit jarak. Yeah. So when it comes to jarak, distance, <clears throat> and it's thousands of miles, it must be long. All right. So the largest rivers can be thousands of miles long. Yang panjangnya beribu ribu batu. Okay. So the rest. Okay, if you notice, uh, when people come up with questions, they will give very close answers. Okay, this got to do with uh, distance. Far is also got to do with distance. Wide is um, close to distance. Okay, so they are very close. So they are all like, you know, distractors. Yeah, so be careful with distractors. Distractors means um, jawapan, jawapan. Yang distract you, yang mengganggu you, okay? Distract you from uh, choosing the right answer, okay? So don't get distracted, right? So these are two, uh, what you call examples from part two, the rational close, yeah? All right. And then this one. Okay, I think this is going to be quite a problem to many students because it's um, that the passage is long. Wait, yeah. Okay, because the passage is long and the vocabulary is of quite high level, you know, of B2, B1, and maybe a few C1, yeah? Okay, so now, okay. Of course, like this kind of question also, you have to really understand the whole context, but um, because I want to um, focus on how to answer the questions only, I just take uh, or pick. Uh, question number 23 and 24 okay all right so the first uh question 23 how does community service help the writer in life okay look at the what do you call um, <clears throat> the keywords first community okay how does community service help the writer in life okay the writer the key here is the writer's life all right okay so, Offering service to those in need and creating a positive impact is an important ingredient in being an active participant in a community. So the word community comes in now. All right, community service. So the key words or the key phrase here is community service, not only community. All right, community service teaches life lessons often not taught in school. All right. Has it been mentioned here? Okay, so look at, okay, it's here, D. It teaches her many life values, but you cannot go to this straight away. You have to make sure that you uh, make the right decision to choose which one, all right? So this one looks correct already, but you have to confirm by reading, uh, uh, I mean, like, do further reading here. At one party, a little boy and his father came up to thank me for hosting what was the boy's first organized birthday party. I then thanked them for watching me something too. Okay, the father who lived in shelter uh, with his son looked at me puzzled as if he was not worthy of teaching me anything. All right, I explained to him that he taught me to have the courage to ask for help when needed. So this is what the writer learned. Okay, I explained to him that he taught me. She learned from this um, uh, a father, okay, that uh, she needed to have the courage to ask for help when needed, okay? I will never forget the hug and lesson he gave me. So talking about lesson, talking about what she learned. So this is confirmed, service teachers' life lessons. So the answer is D. Okay, I cannot mark D here because I have um, what you call zoomed in. Okay, so number 24. Why does she believe in being passionate? Why does the writer believe in being passionate? So the idea is belief and the word passionate is there. So in order to answer this also, you have to understand the meaning of passionate. If you don't understand, can you answer the question? Uh, a bit difficult, all right? So passionate, what is the meaning of passionate? Um, you 
excited, so excited about something. You love doing something so much that is passionate. Yeah, gairah tentang sesuatu. You suka sangat sesuatu tu. All right. Find a course you are passionate about. I love birthday celebrations and want underprivileged children to have the opportunity to have celebrations. Underprivileged children means um, kanak-kanak yang um, yang apa? Yang susah. Uh, okay, uh, mungkin yang uh, gelandangan, yang mungkin tak ada parents macam tu. Okay, to have the opportunity to have celebrations too. Passion is infectious. Okay, so passionate is an adjective. Passion is a noun. Okay, um, um, minat yang mendalam. Uh, passion means minat yang mendalam tu uh, mudah uh, berjangkit. Yeah, infectious. It motivates people to help and volunteer. So now we're looking at why does she believe in being passionate? Okay, I would advise any leader to ask the volunteers to share the ideas. Giving everyone the opportunity for input has led to fabulous, uh, sorry, fabulous birthday parties at the shelter. So, uh, when the writer advise, uh, okay, um, uh, what do you call the leader? Okay, any leader to to ask volunteers to share their ideas because before that, okay, she found that all right when everyone was given the opportunity to give input. It had led, uh, uh, what do you call, the effort to uh, fab fabulous birthday parties at the shelter, tempat perlindungan. Yeah? Uh, bila semua orang bagi idea, okay, semangat semua bagi idea, uh, hasilnya sangat bagus. Um, like amazing, all right? Okay, so experiencing the smile of hope on the faces of homeless children who have never had a birthday party before is a memory that will never fade. Okay, so kenapa perlu sangat tanam minat untuk um, uh, what you call um, um, bila bekerja, bila be buat sesuatu. Okay, so first A, individuals will be inspired to do their best. Everybody will be able to share ideas. People will love what they do. Everyone will enjoy the job. So these are almost, you know, correct answers. These are close to the correct answers. Everyone will enjoy their job when they are passionate. But it's, it's not the idea here. Okay? People will love what they do. It's almost the same thing with D. People will love what they do. It's like people enjoy what they do. C and D are similar. And B, everybody will be able to share ideas. All right. To share ideas is like giving ideas here. here. But um, uh, the, the outcome of giving the ideas there actually that we look for. So uh, the, the, the ideas will be quality ideas. Uh, will be helpful ideas, you know. So the best answer is A, individuals will be inspired to do their best. So they try to put the best effort in doing something. They will try to give the best ideas. Okay, so how do we know? Because the outcome is fabulous. All right, here. So the best answer is A. All right. Okay, so done with that. Okay, this is, uh, this part is quite tricky also actually. Okay, this is part four. Okay, question 27 to 32. Okay, I have to read this so that you understand uh, what you're supposed to do. All right. <clears throat> you are going to read an article about a blacksmith who has come up with a renowned invention. Uh, six sentences have been removed from the article. Choose from the sentences A to H the one which fits each gap from uh, number 27 to number 32. So there are six centers, okay, have been removed, telah dikeluarkan. There are two extra sentences which you do not need to use. And this makes the question difficult uh, because uh, there are two extra questions that you are not going to use. So these are the distractors actually, all right? So, okay. The story of, of the bicycle. Okay, how are you going to look at, uh, how are you going to um, uh, attempt these questions? Okay, um, this is from our TOV. It's a little bit difficult, okay, because it's for B2 level. But I'm going to show you the, 
uh, exercises that is easier so that you can see the technique of answering first. All right, this is actually I've taken from examenglish.com. This is for B1 level. B1 is like for maybe PT3 students. Okay. All right. So here, I just want you to look at uh, first um, the sentences given to you, the choices here, the A, B, C up to H here. All right. And, and in this particular uh, exercise, there are only five uh, sentences taken out. Like for the B2 level is uh, six sentences, all right? So here, what should you look at first? You study the sentences first, okay? Uh, look at the keywords, the clue, yeah? The contextual clue, okay? For example, here you have for A, I was much more confident than before. So that means there's a comparison being made, all right? So maybe you need to use this when uh there's comparison made in the text all right so check out all these kind of uh, keywords all right and then another one is b i shared a room with one of my classmates george so talking about classmate is there any mention about classmates is there any mention about room okay we look at it later okay none of them spoke any french okay so what's the key here this is the cohesive device them all right uh, the pronoun. So there might be a mention of some people, all right? Some people. We don't know who yet, okay? So be alert of this, all right? It's often difficult for us to get the teacher's attention. For us to get the teacher's attention. So that means there must be something, okay, that is connected to the idea of uh, it's being difficult, okay, for us, maybe for the writer and other students, okay, uh, to get the teacher's attention. And then usually all my lessons are the same. So this is very clear. And the word usually is there. So it might refer to some routine. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then uh, F, but at the college, there was huge electronic board. Ah, the keyword here is but. So you will look at the opposite idea later. Okay, so maybe you have to uh, bear in mind, okay, um, this might uh, be, uh, what do you call, uh, one of the answers, okay, showing opposite idea, okay. Uh, idea yang berlawanan sebab ada but tu. Right. G, this helps me to improve communication skills. So this is also a cohesive device. This yeah, referring to what? And got to do with what? Got to do with communication skills. All right. Okay. <clears throat> and then the last one is this allowed, what is it? This allowed each student to get more individual atten attention. Right, this again, referring to what? And the idea is more, okay, individual attention. Okay, now take a look at this, All right? Shall we read together? All right, my experience at summer school. Uh, summer school is like an exchange program, a student exchange program, okay? Um, in France, okay, where students uh, from France, they go to um, England, okay? to study there for maybe two weeks, something like that. All right, last summer I went to a summer school in Oxford to study English. We studied at a college where adults normally study. The classrooms were very modern. In my classroom, now this one is the classroom at Oxford. Okay, in my classroom now, okay classroom expert and in my classroom at school the teacher writes on a blackboard okay so blackboard right number 27 is missing okay the teacher could display photos or video clips on it it was really cool okay best sangat because the teacher can display or could display photos and video clips on it so now there must be some opposite ideas blackboard versus something Okay, versus something else, all right? Because this something can display photos and video clips. So what are they? 
Okay, so shall we check? All right. Okay, now go to F. All right, F. But at the college, there was huge electronic box. So when I say versus, that means it's opposite idea, berlawanan. So berlawanan can start with, okay, but. The sentence can start with but. So electronic board versus blackboard. So the best answer here is F. All right. Okay, once you're done with uh, selection, of the uh, answers, okay, you may a circle, you may tick or you may cross up to you. So that shows that you have already used this sentence, okay? Make sure you do that so that you don't get mixed up later, okay? And then uh, the next paragraph. The summer school was different from my normal school in France. The classes were a lot smaller. We only had 16 pupils in the class in Oxford. But at my school in France, there are over 35. So 16 versus 35. 16 orang pelajar uh, lawan dengan 35. And 28 is missing. It was also easier for the teacher to control the class. Okay, so now look at the sentence before and after the missing sentence. Okay, before... It says we only had 16 pupils in class in Oxford. But at my school in France, there are over 35. Okay, so if you are not careful, what happened? You might go to this. If you are not careful, you might go to this. It's often difficult for us to get the teacher's attention because the sentence before that says, um, in my school, there are over 35 students in the class. So it's difficult for us to get the teacher's attention. If we stop here, yes, it fits the missing sentence there. But, however, you look at the sentence after that, it was also easier. The cohesive device here, also, the connector here, it was also easier. Okay? for the teacher to control the class. So this sounds positive, all right? It's a positive idea. Easier for the teacher to control the class, which meant that we wasted less time. So this one is a negative idea. Difficult for us to get the teacher's attention. So which one is correct? So when we have also, we actually are giving uh, or, um, you know, talking about something that is similar before that, something of the similar idea before that. So this must be something that is supported by uh, this sentence. It was also easier for the teacher. So we have to go for something positive here. So what is it? When there are only 16 pupils in uh, class in Oxford, all right? So which one? Okay. Look at H. This allowed each student to get more individual attention. Okay, if you put this sentence here, all right, and then you read again, you further read, okay, the rest of the sentence, okay, it was also easier, right? Blah, blah, blah. All right, so. It will read like this. This allowed each student to get more individual attention. It was also easier. So these two ideas are of similar idea, right? They um, actually support having 16 pupils in the class in Oxford. So that's how you decide. So please look at the sentence before and after, all right? So... Um, I'm not going to do all because it's going to take time, but we go back to this one. All right, see, this is a little bit more difficult because the words are more difficult than uh, uh, the B1 exercise just now, okay? So for this one, all right, take a look at this. Mm. It all started, all right, it's in the beginning. So when it is the beginning, 
All right. Uh, this person, Macmillan, observe a couple of traders struggling with their horse saddle. Ada masalah dengan uh, pelapik -pe dekat horse tu, saddle tu. Um, plowing onto startled pedestrians. Okay, and then uh, here because it all started... <coughs> Okay, so um, when he saw this problem happened, okay, he decided that it was high time the vehicle was improved. Okay, horse, okay, is considered as a vehicle, all right? And people have problem uh, with uh, riding horses, right? Uh, plowing onto startup pedestrians and all. So what? he was thinking at that time was to come up with something that can solve this problem. So he decided, that's why it all started, uh, this part, uh, the idea for him to come up with a new vehicle, right? To uh, improve this vehicle. Okay, so this is G. And then the next day, Macmillan started to work on his ideas on how to combine the moving wheels with the horse ride. So it's like riding a horse but using wheels. Okay, riding a horse but using wheels. So how? <clears throat> okay, so when the next day he started working on his idea, he came up with, okay, ini hasil dia. Right, he came out with the first prototype so starting working all right and then he came up with the first prototype from an older wheel vehicle called a hobby horse all right so this is a d okay all right okay maybe some of you have already discussed this with your teachers or maybe you have not because uh we had limited time um after the tov test we only have about a few days before the holiday so at least um i've already given you the answers to number 27 and 28 how to get them correct okay all right so this is part four uh kind of tricky also okay so uh the key um what you call uh, the moral of the story here. Uh, what you should do is to expand your vocabulary power. Um, without, um, you know, a lot of vocabulary, you won't be able to understand uh, the text fully. Okay, so done with this. All right, so the last one is part five of reading paper, reading and use of English paper, paper one. Okay, this one is a little bit easier because this is actually information transfer okay so for information transfer like usual you have to look at the keywords all right for example here i just cannot ignore loss okay um sorry i read this one first okay which paragraph af is suitable for each teenager okay which paragraph all right Okay, so you just write A and F because later you're going to transfer this onto the OMR sheet. Okay, um, kena tanda A dengan F. Bukan, bukan letak perkataan cooking, fostering animals, no. You just write A up to F um, because later you're going to transfer the answers onto the objective sheet. Yeah, uh, so apa, jawapan, uh, kertas jawapan objective, the ABC. So the statements, I just cannot ignore lost animals. So uh, the keyword is very clear here. Okay. Uh, so is it about animals? Gather the stray animals in your local area and foster them. So definitely this is a B. Okay, you write B here. Okay, I make my own room decorations. So my own. Keywords my own. All right. Keyword here is DIY. Do it yourself. Right, so if you are bored with the same stuff at home, try some DIY projects and reinvent. Even though there's no mention about decorations, but the key uh, phrase here is my own, and here is DIY. Do it yourself, okay? Um, <clears throat> so this is E. And I love to entertain my guests with my new dishes. Um, dishes, the keyword is dishes. So maybe. The word cooking, 
gives you the idea and the word dishes is here. So what is it? A. All right. And I enjoy capturing special moments. What's the keyword? Capturing. Tangkap. Tangkap. Apa? Tangkap gambar. Special moments. So capturing pictures means photography. Okay. So this can be a fun hobby for teens who enjoy staying behind the camera. And capturing is mentioned here. So this is... Uh, F. Okay, this is F. Okay, if you notice, you can score here. You cannot afford to lose marks here. This is for everyone to score. 4.4. Mesti wajib dapat 4.4 because this is the easiest. All right. And then uh, question number 37 and 40. Be careful with the instructions. Many students do not like to read uh, instructions. And because of that, they fail to give the correct answers because of carelessness. Okay, so look at the instruction here, the rubric here. Complete the notes below using information from the text. Choose no more than one word. No more than one word. It's in bold already, okay? So, tidak lebih dari satu perkataan. So, you have to fill in the blank with only one word. All right, so be careful. Sometimes here, it's written like two words, okay? Maybe the most, not more than three words. Yeah. Okay. It can be two words or three words. Okay. From the passage for each answer, mark your answer on the separate answer sheet. Okay. Like this one, you have to write the only four questions whose answer that you have to write. You don't, you don't just write ABC because there's no ABC here. You have to write the words. Okay. So if you have green fingers, you can have your own backyard garden. Okay, the keywords is garden filled with, all right, so what's gardening here? So look at gardening, filled with what? Flowers. Can you write plant flowers? Cannot, because plant flowers are two words. So you have to take only flowers. Vegetables, okay, can be a possible answer. And plants, okay, can also be possible answer here. Okay, so it's easy. Sarah has a new hobby. She is enjoying how to paint. So go to paint. Very easy. All right. So I think that's it. I'm not going to go through all because it's clear already. I think um, this part is quite easy because there are clues for you to look for. And hopefully you, uh, if you don't understand certain words, you still uh, be able to... Uh, infer to make intelligent guesses uh, of what the meanings of the word i'm sorry uh guesses on the meaning of the words all right okay next okay so writing all right okay i have to check my handphone first Okay, writing. <clears throat> okay, first, I'll go straight into cohesive devices. This is a very important element um, in writing. And also in the reading, actually, like just now I mentioned uh, a few times, cohesive devices, cohesive devices, you know, they serve as contextual clues eh? uh, in reading, in understanding a text and all. And of course, in writing also, they are very important, okay, uh, because uh, they are included in one of the subscales um, of the assessment, all right. So what why? Why are cohesive devices important? All right. Look at part three assessment scale for organization. Okay. So this is taken from our MIP. Okay. The uh, module intervensi pembelajaran. I just copied it from there. It's easier for me to show. Okay. So like this one. Okay. Score five for part three. We're talking about part three here. Okay. Um, text is well organized and coherent using a variety of cohesive devices um, with generally good effect. And if you are able 
to organize your essay this way using a variety of cohesive devices. Okay, not only many cohesive devices, but variety. You don't only use the word because, because from beginning to end. Okay, uh, it should be um, a variety, something like um, furthermore, moreover, it has to be various. Okay, so with generally good effect, not only you can use them correctly, but with generally good effect, then only you can score five for part three. Yeah, so this is part three. And for three marks, okay, text is generally well organized, generally well organized and coherent using a variety of cohesive devices. You are able to use a variety of cohesive devices, but maybe the effect is not that good. All right. And for part two, this level, okay, is actually a score of five. And for part one, okay, score of five refers to this. Uses simple connectors and a limited number of cohesive devices appropriately. So simple connectors, what are they? And a limited number of cohesive devices. Okay, for part one, if you are able to use like simple connectors, okay, maybe but, so, and. And maybe one word of uh, something like um, furthermore, okay? You can score five already for part one, the email, okay? But for part two, you have to be able to use a variety of cohesive devices, all right? So now take a look at the, uh, the meaning of cohesive device. What are they, okay? So... Okay, what are cohesive devices? You use cohesive devices to connect ideas between different parts of a piece of writing. There are three main types of cohesive devices. Different parts of writing. It can be in uh, a paragraph. You connect the ideas in sentences. Or maybe in one sentence, you connect the ideas in that one particular sentence. Or maybe in the whole essay, okay, you connect the ideas from one paragraph to another. So you use cohesive devices to glue uh, these ideas together. I use the word glue because you, you tie them up together, all right? So that the essay becomes cohesive and coherent, okay? I will mention about coherence later in the sample essay that I'm giving you after this, right? So what are they? There are three main types, main types, yeah, not all, but the main types of cohesive devices, pronoun, synonyms, and connectors. Okay, so look at the first one. The first one is pronouns, okay? One of uh, cohesive devices is the pronouns, okay? So what are the functions of the pronoun? Uh, sorry, what is the function of the pronouns? All right, to refer back to something previously mentioned, kita pakai kata ganti nama diri, to refer to something that we have mentioned before. For example, the word this, the word that, this practice, that book, these, those, okay? He, she, it, they, her, us. I think you know all this, all right? Uh, kata ganti nama diri in bahasa Melayu, dia, mereka, okay? All right, and then how to use them in sentences? Okay, for example, Alif went out to the playground. He played on the slide. So, he referred to Alif. Before that, you mentioned a name, but you don't want to refer to Alif. I mean, you don't want to repeat the word Alif many times or for a second time, you replace it with he. Okay, that is pronoun. I think everyone knows this. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, the function of synonym. Okay, so another cohesive device is synonyms, right? So what is the function of synonyms? To replace words of the same meaning to get the reader to stay focused on the idea being discussed. All right, for example, the word car, you may replace it with the word vehicle. The word food, maybe one of the 
food mentioned is bread or maybe something else. And then maybe Muhammad Salah. Okay, I think everyone knows who Muhammad Salah is. All right, he's a footballer. Okay, so how do we use this? All right, a car was seen leaving the crime scene. The vehicle was chased by a member of the public. So the vehicle refers to the word car. Because in a good piece of writing, we don't repeat things many times. We don't repeat the subject. We don't repeat nouns many times. We have to use uh, uh, another word to replace it, okay? To replace, like the word car, we replace with the word vehicle. So this is considered um, a cohesive device, all right? Was chased, okay, the vehicle was chased by a member of the public. Next, there was a lot of food, but she only ate the bread. So bread refer to the food. So uh, there are a lot of food on the table. It includes bread and something else. Okay, so uh, we specify what this person ate. It was bread. Okay. And the next one is Muhammad Salah. is Liverpool's top player. All right. The footballer is an Egyptian. So the footballer refers to who? Muhammad Salah. Okay, we don't want, um, maybe we want to make our writing more interesting. We don't want to use he, 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 he many times. All right, so maybe we want to use the word footballer. The footballer is an Egyptian. Okay, this is synonyms. All right, so the last one is the connectors. Number three is connectors. Okay. To link words, okay, the function is to link words, phrases, and sentences. They help to introduce the reader to the relationship between phrases, sentences, and the entire paragraphs. Not only the relationship between phrases in one sentence, but, uh, you know, but sentences, between sentence. So, okay, sentence to sentence, and then the entire paragraph. Okay, so what are they? Uh, words like however, therefore, so, in addition, also, but moreover, so and so forth. So this considered, okay, the one that I'm circling now, uh, considered um, this one also, simple connectors, okay? Um, as we can see here, um, the score five for part one, okay? Or score one for part three. So simple connectors. Okay, examples. Alif played on the slide. Later, he went on the swings. So later, referring to what Alif did after he played on the slide. All right, Rose was late because she took the bus. Okay, so the connection between why she was late. Okay, because she took the bus. The bus made her late to go somewhere. Okay, All right, Nina was late. So she took the bus. So this has another meaning, okay? Different meaning. Nina was late, so she took the bus. If she didn't take the bus, maybe she was much, much. I mean, like, she, she's going to be very late to, to, to go somewhere, right? So see, the because and so change the meaning, even though we talk about being late and taking a bus. All right, so... Um, this is for reasons, right? This is for um, cause and effect. Cause and effect. Okay. These are just three examples. Okay. So now, um, if you want to Google, okay, um, the words, okay, or the connectors, you can also use, uh, so you can also uh, type um the phrases like transition words or transitional words linking words uh they also known as linkers connectives or discourse markers so they are all the same thing all right you can study on your own there are a lot of uh sites okay that um can teach you um about cohesive devices or the connectors here okay so why are they um, important? All right, cohesive device. All right, so I'm referring to the 
module. Okay, this is how our module looks like. Um, the module intervensi pembelajaran. So I'm going to go to the cohesive devices part. All right. Okay, so why are connectors used in our essays? Just to show you a little bit from the MIP. Okay, read the sentences below. Susie wants ice cream. She wants cake. So there are two ideas here, but they are not connected. Susie wants ice cream, but she also wants cake. So these two ideas are connected by the connector but and given more um, meaning here with the word also, but also. She wants ice cream, but she also wants cake. All right. And then another one is, I went to the beach. There were too many jellyfish. I decided to stay. I had a good time. I met some friends. So there are five sentences here which are not connected. Okay, so they look chunky. Okay, so it's not nice for you to write like this. I went to the beach. Although there were too many jellyfish, I decided to stay. Okay, that's a comma here. Actually, the punctuation also helps in organization. So using a comma here, we have a smooth flow of idea, right? Using the word although and then a comma. Okay, I had a good time because I met some friends. Now from five sentences, there are now three sentences and the ideas are clear because they are connected by connectors. So with connectors, the sentences make logical connection. So we are looking for this when we mark your essay. Uh, we look at the, the smoothness in the flow of your ideas, all right? So um, just to tell you, just to share with you, okay, um, in this topic, um, in the MIP, okay, I've already um, shared a, a list of cohesive devices, okay, for example, um, here to show contrast. So we might want to use the word but or however, on the other hand, so and so forth. And then I also give the sample sentences. And this one is for your exercise in the class, all right? So um, hopefully you will be able to use this later when the school reopens. All right, I'll go back to my slides. Okay, so done with cohesive devices. Okay, see how they are used in the samples uh, essay after this. All right, part one, okay. Paper two, writing, part one. Question number one, okay. You receive an email from a friend, Lisa, who lives in Brunei. Hi, I'm planning to visit Malaysia this coming school. Sorry, this coming school holiday. Let's visit places. Where shall we go? And what can we do there? What should we bring? I'll be waiting for your reply. Bye. Now write an email to your friend in about 80 words write your answer below so that's a space given to you to uh, to write your answer okay all right so now um for this part i want you to identify the tasks of the question so how many tasks are there and how to answer them okay so look at the question mark here where shall we go and what can we do there all right and then the last one is, what should we bring? Apa yang kita perlu bawa? So there are three things that you have to respond to Lisa. Okay, you you know like um um you have to uh like this. Imagine that you are Lisa. Okay, when you get back the response from the person who uh, you ask, you know like you ask these questions um to okay you. Whether you have to check whether you get all the 
uh, information uh, given to you or not? Okay, where shall we go? Do you get the, what do you call, um, the response on the place that you have, to, you are going to go? Or what can you, the activity, all right? So here, place, talking about place. And then here, the activity, right? And here, the nouns, maybe things that you need to bring. Okay, so C, uh, the assessment scale. All right, so uh, for part one, two, and three, assessment scale for content. So uh, now I'm concentrating on the content, the EC. Okay, how to fulfill the tasks, all the tasks, to get five marks for the content, five upon five. So what I can see is students can score five upon five for all the parts, part one, part two, part three, if they are careful if you are careful with the tasks okay uh, given in the question try to respond to all the tasks well okay for example here okay um how to get five upon five so all the content is relevant to the tasks okay target reader is fully informed fully informed so how so there are three here one, two, three. It's the same with other parts of uh, the questions, okay? Part one, part two, part three. It's the same thing. You have to identify the task like this. Task one, task two, and task three, okay? All right, so look at these answers, okay? Model answer, okay? Oh, sorry, we have one more I forgot. <coughs> Okay, model answer. Okay, to Lisa, subject your trip to Malaysia. Hi, that's great news. I'm so excited to show you around. I'm going to make sure you have a tremendous experience here. There are many places to go to, so I can only list a few. So, so is not right here. Maybe the word but is better. There are many places to go to, but I can only list a few here. Okay, because too many of them to write. All right. Firstly, I suggest we go to a water park called Samway Lagoon. It will be refreshing after a long flight. Okay, so the first uh, place has been mentioned. So a water park called Samway Lagoon. So this is answering task number one. Where shall we go? Okay, it will be refreshing after a long flight. There are a lot of cool rides. We should try all. So try all. What can we do there? What can we do at Sunway Lagoon? So there are cool rides and we should try all. So this is, sorry, point number two. All right, point number two. <clears throat> okay, so okay, I'll write better here. Okay, this is point number two. Okay, with that being said, remember to bring a bathing suit. Okay, to bring a bathing suit. So the, the word bring is here. The word bring is here. So this is task three. Answering task three. Okay, so with that being said, remember to bring a bathing suit. That's great food as well. Maybe in the night, we could go to a horror house or an escape room in Bukit Bintang. So another uh, answer to task one, right? Okay, and then I know exactly your kind of fun. There's more to do, but I'll save them until you get here. Can't wait to see you. Bye, Dylan. All right, so now uh, task one has been fulfilled. Task two and task three are also there. So. Content, C, full marks, okay? Five upon five, all right. So now take a look at communicative achievement, CA. What is communicative achievement? Okay, produces a text that communicates straightforward ideas. This is for part one. Straightforward ideas means idea and simple, 
you don't need to write abstract ideas, uh, not high level of discussion and all. Uh, okay, just straightforward ideas using the conventions of communicative tasks reasonably appropriately. So what is the convention of the communicative task? So you have to know here what you should write. You should write an email. So the communicative task is writing an email. So how do you write an email? So is this the peraturan, the convention? So um, an email is informal. All right. So you're writing to a friend. So it should sound like writing to a friend, like this one. The word hi, the word bye. Can't wait to see you. You don't even have to write, you know, uh, a subject here. Can't wait to see you, right? With the exclamation mark. Yeah, this looks like uh, the convention of writing an email has been fulfilled. All right, firstly, okay, I'd, all right. I'd. Okay, so shows what? Shows uh, is informal. And what else? All right, so we have contraction like this. Uh, okay, so contraction like this shows um, that this student used informal language to write an email. So for CA um, is five also, full marks, five, because it looks like writing a real email. Okay, what about the cohesive devices for organization? Yeah, organization, is it good? Okay, we have um, here is a cohesive devices. Okay, I changed my pen um, color. Okay, I use red now. Okay, this is for cohesive, for O, right? Okay, so here, and then the word, so this is not right. Okay, and firstly, I suggest we go to, okay, it will be refreshing after, okay, this is a cohesive device. There are a lot of cool rights. We should try all. All also referring to the cool rights. So this is cohesive device, all. With that being said, okay, this is also cohesive device. Remember to bring a bedding. So that's great food as well, as well. Cohesive device. Maybe later, maybe and later in the night. Okay. They are all cohesive devices. We could go to a horror house and escape or also a cohesive device. Okay. In Bukit Bintang. I know exactly cohesive device. You're kind of fun. There's more to do, but cohesive device, I save them until a cohesive device also. Here also, can't wait to see you by. So there's so many cohesive devices. Even though this is only for part one, but this student has already used a variety of cohesive devices. So for organization, okay, um, this is a five also, right? So last one is the language. Language is the grammar. Uh, just a little bit here, maybe one or two. So five marks. So these students got 20 upon 20 for part one. Okay. So shall we move to the next one? Okay, part two. Okay, you must answer this question. Write your answer. In 125 or 150 words in an appropriate style. Okay, so this is part two. Just now is part one, email. But here, what kind of essay should you write here? You must answer this question. Write your answer in 125 and 150 words. All right, but it's not written here. What kind of essay? But don't worry, okay, just go on reading. Okay, question two. In your class, you have been talking about hobbies. Your teacher has asked you to write an essay about the benefits of having a hobby. In your essay, all right, you should write about your hobby. Task one. Okay, when you usually do your hobby. Task two. Okay, what? This is what? Okay, this is when? Okay, this is what? Okay, and then why you enjoy the hobby? Okay, so why? The reason. Okay, so the reason. Okay, now, so there are three um, 
tasks also here for you to fulfill. Okay, write your essay using all the notes and giving reasons for your point of view. Giving reasons here, refer to why. Okay, your essay. So you have to write an essay, but it's not specified what kind of essay. It's not specified whether it's an email or something. So this is a general essay, right? General. <coughs> Okay, so this is general. So when general, when you write a general essay, you have to know the conventions of writing a general essay. What should it be like? Okay, all right. Now take a look at part two, assessment scale for CA, the community, communicative achievement, and O for organization. Okay, look at part two, CA uses the conventions of the communicative task to hold the reader's attention and communicate straightforward ideas appropriately. Okay, not only you are able to use the right conventions of writing the essay, okay, but you must be able to hold the reader's attention. Okay, what does that mean, holding the reader's attention? Okay, and then... For organization, text is generally well organized and coherent. Well organized, coherent, and using a variety of cohesive devices as I shared just now. Okay, so how to answer? Okay, so now I'm I'm looking at the organization first. Okay, where is it? Okay, I'm looking at the organization first. So now, in writing an essay, okay, you have to follow the convention of writing, okay, by having first the introduction. Then only you go into the ideas, the points, okay. Another word for ideas is the point or central idea, okay. Points or central idea, idea one, idea two, or three. And then this is what we call the body. Yeah. So intro and the points. Okay. Let's say if you have two points, you just write two ideas, two paragraphs of the body. And then the last one is, of course, the conclusion. Okay. The conclusion. All right. So what should you write in these boxes? What should you write in the introduction? Idea one, idea two, idea three, and conclusion. So these boxes show organization, actually. Okay, the structure. All right, so these are what we call the structure of the essay. All right, so the structure comes under organization. If you have this, that means your um, essay is organized. And with the usage of a variety of cohesive devices, uh, you have a very good essay. You got the structure, you got all the ideas in the essay tied up by cohesive devices. All right. And then how, okay, what is community achievement? Okay, how to respond to this? Okay, so... Uh, introduction just now is the first paragraph that goes to organization. But the content of this, okay, the content of the introduction goes to this, goes to the CA. Okay, what kind of content should you include in your introduction? What kind of content should you write in the second paragraph, in the third paragraph, in the fourth paragraph? All right, so this one, okay, you have like task one, task two, task three. Okay, so this might go to idea one. This one is here. Number three goes to number three idea. Okay, then conclusion. Later, you repeat the introduction. Conclusion is the repetition of the introduction, actually. So when you write a general essay, okay, you must have this structure. It's not like writing an email. All right. So general essay must be formal. Okay. So this essay for part two must be formal. All right. So when it is formal, you actually can score high here for the communicative achievement. Okay. So 
introduction talking about what okay i'm going to share with you uh, the samples of introductions later all right after this in the next slide but now okay um id one what is your hobby for example like playing foot ball okay and then when do you when do you usually do your hobby maybe after school in the evening right okay and um idea three um why you enjoy the hobby okay because it makes me active okay energized for example all right okay so now you have answered you give the idea football and then it's after school responding to the to the word when and then makes me active or energize responding to the word why so in terms of content in terms of content okay the marks for content you already scored five okay so because you have responded to all the tasks here all right so for ca and organization can you score five here or can you score five here also see what you should have in the um introduction in the body and in the conclusion all right so now in order for you to understand what you should write in a general essay you have to understand the word coherence okay it's mentioned here all right so me okay the word coherent oops sorry okay the word coherence coherent what's the meaning of coherent okay and then there's another word cohesive they are like interrelated okay so here okay so what is coherence okay coherence are these these are the things that makes your essay coherent you have the introduction structure you have the paragraph structure you have the conclusion structure so basically you have what i've already uh, shared just now in the previous slide you have the introduction you have uh, ideas and uh, uh, idea one two or three and then you have a uh, conclusion structure okay so what do you have in this um introduction structure okay what how you should structure your introduction first you have to have a general statement about the topic this is very important many students do not know how to start writing and when they start writing uh, their introduction becomes very personal starting with i i i which is not good okay a good piece of writing like a guided essay like just now part two a general essay okay should have general statements about the topic the topic here is about hobbies yeah having a hobby right and then only you have specific statement okay in order to answer the question to fulfill the task and then you have this thesis statement okay don't worry about the term but you should know that what the essay will do what the essay will do is like this um when the reader read your statement they know that the whole essay is about having a hobby and what hobby it is is depends on the candidate or the student all right paragraph structure each paragraph should have one central idea one central idea idea utama dalam uh, satu paragraph tu okay you introduce the idea you explain the idea you give an example to illustrate the central idea okay so these actually respond to the um okay i go back here respond to this hold the reader's attention here okay all right so how to hold the reader's attention
you have to have a lot of uh, ideas to write. When you give a central idea, you should have elaboration. So these are called elaborations. Hurayan, hurayan. Hurayan inilah yang buat you can hold the reader's attention. Okay. Um, uh, the, the audience or the, the, the reader will get the full idea of what you're talking about. It's not just only the main idea, but it is supported with um, uh, a lot of other supporting ideas. Okay, so uh, this is to respond to the communicative achievement just now. And the last one is the conclusion structure. Okay, you restate the thesis. That means you repeat this one. Okay, repeat. You repeat the intro. Okay, but in different words. All right, different words. Okay, and then in the end, you give opinion. Maybe you want to sum up. All right, you give a opinion. Okay, you um, summarize and then you give opinion or recommendation or prediction, depending on what kind of essay you are writing. Okay, all right. Now compare these introductions. Okay, this is an example of uh, an introduction answering the questions on hobby just now, All right? In my opinion, hobby is something we love to do. Everybody has different hobbies such as cooking, reading, singing, and more. For example, I really enjoy playing musical instruments like piano, flute, and guitar. I usually play or practice musical instruments during my spare times, especially after I've done my assignments and chores. I enjoy spending my spare times with playing musical instruments because of I have such a very strong passion in music. Okay, uh, I'm not talking about the mistakes. Okay, so we're not focusing the mis uh, focusing on the mistakes yet. Okay, I just want to see uh, whether you can understand if this introduction fulfilled the task of the communicative task just now given uh, uh, in the question. Okay, it's supposed to be a general essay. So if it's a general essay, you must have a general uh, statement here first. Okay, then only you go into personal idea because you have to mention about your own hobby, maybe in the second paragraph. Okay, and then, okay, now take a look at this. Introduction to hobby is a thing that everyone want to do. Hobby are important because it gives you joy and release the stress of your everyday work. Each individual have their own preference thing to do in their free time. So if you compare uh, introduction one and introduction two, which one is more general? Okay, this one is more general. Okay, there are grammatical errors, yes, but we're not focusing on that. But this is the type of introduction you should write, okay, to start your essay. All right, so this one, okay, what about this one? Okay, um, in my opinion, hobby is something we love to do. This is general, okay, this is correct. Everybody has different hobbies. Uh, such as cooking, reading, singing, and more. Okay, this is also correct in terms of general statement. But, okay, these students jump into the, uh, what do you call, a specific um, statement too early. Okay, for example, I really enjoy playing music. And, and so many things here mentioned. This is supposed to be uh, maybe in paragraph two or oh, sorry in the last sentence the last sentence of paragraph one the introduction then um it is more elaborated in paragraph two okay so this could be in paragraph two okay para two this is para one okay what about, okay after i've done my assignment so this one is Answering the question when. So this should be in paragraph three. Okay. Enjoy spending my uh, spare times with uh, playing musical instruments because I have such a very strong passion in music. Okay. Strong passion for music. Okay. This one is the because, is the why. Answering the question why should be in paragraph four. 
right? Then only the conclusion. Now, uh, the students has cramped everything in the first paragraph, all right? Can you see the weakness here? But she has a lot of ideas here. It's just like the organization is not good, okay? She should organize this way. All right, so using paragraph one, two, three, and four. All right, introduction two, this is general. And this person has not gone into personal idea in the uh, first paragraph, the introduction, this is good, okay? All right, so look at the last one, introduction, sorry. Um, okay, take this one first. All right, hobbies. Hobbies play a very important role in our lives. They occupy our minds when we are free and also make us happy. Hobbies are our escape from the real world that makes us forget our worries. Moreover, they make our lives interesting and enjoyable. So this is the best one, okay? The grammar is good, um, the idea is general, um, suitable uh, for an introduction in answering the question just now. Okay, so we look for this kind, all right? So this is uh, introduction two and introduction three, but the best is introduction three. So this, if you can write like this, this responds to the CA, the communicative achievement. All right, you have the introduction, good, it's for organization. But what should be in the, uh, in the introduction is the CA. What is the content there? All right, so it should be general, here, here, general statement, yeah? All right, general statement here in the introduction. So I hope you understand. All right, so... Okay, for this coherent structure here, um, uh, coherence means you follow this structure, all tied up together using the glue just now. What is the glue? The cohesive devices, all right? All this structure, all right, uh, glued by the cohesive devices, all right? And this structure is suitable for part two, guided essay, and part three, the article and review, okay? You can apply this. Report, you have to have something else, uh, but you have introduction also. You have um, um, paragraph two, paragraph three, and conclusion also. But then the content is a little bit different, okay, for report. All right, so now this is pay, uh, part two. Okay, now we go to part three, okay. Part three. Report, article, review, or story, okay? Okay, look at part three assessment scale for communication, sorry, communicative achievement. This is learning, right? This is communicative, my uh, uh, typo. Okay, so communicative achievement, right? Uses the conventions of the communicative task effect so now not only you can uh, use the conventions of the communicative task, but you are able to use them effectively to hold the target reader's attention and communicate with ease, fulfilling all the purposes. Then only you can score five for part three. Part three is the most difficult part. All right. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, sample question on a report. Okay, so in part three, it's either you are given report, a report, article, review, or story, right? And you choose one. So uh, three questions, okay? Choose one. Choose one. All right, model question of a report. So this is an example of a report. Your school has decided to hold a co-curricular day to be held in the school hall or in the field. Your principal has asked you to carry out a survey amongst the students on which venue they prefer. So I think you understand the question that you have to carry out. 
a survey, okay, to find out whether the students prefer the school hall or the field to hold or uh, a co-curricular day, right? Write a report on the advantages. Look at the advantages of both venues because there are two venues. So you have the advantages for um, school hall and also for this, the field. Okay, recommendation where the event should take place. Okay, and you also should give the recommendation. Okay, um, so how to answer this question, All right? How to structure your report? Okay, this is how you plan to answer your report. Okay, introduction. Okay, again, introduction, you have the intro, you have the advantages of holding the event in the school hall, and then you have the advantages of holding the event in the field. So this is paragraph one. So I can put the word paragraph here, right? Paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and then paragraph four. Okay, your recommendation, which is in the conclusion. Or maybe you can have uh, another, uh, what do you call a paragraph for conclusion. You can include your recommendation in the conclusion or you can have a different paragraph later. Okay, so this is for organization. All right, so what do what should you have in this structure? For example, in introduction, to respond to CA. So to this one, uh, to, res to respond to this one. Okay, so introduction for a report, you must have the aim. Of the, you must mention the aim of the report and what kind of language should you use, all right? Uh, you can use this kind of phrases. For example, the aim or the purpose or the intention of this, this report is to find out, blah, blah, blah. Or this report is based on a survey on blah, blah, blah. Or this report is intended to... Um, uh, uh, to uh, what do you call to sum up the findings of a survey, okay, on something, all right? And then paragraph two, you mentioned about the advantages of holding the event in the school hall. Are you given the ideas here? The ideas of the advantages? No. So you have to find out on your own. Find out on your own, you have to brainstorm, brainstorm ideas. What are the advantages? And paragraph three, also, you have to find out on your own. You have to brainstorm. Okay, what are the advantages of holding uh, a co-curricular day in the field? All right. And then how to introduce your ideas. You may use all these cohesive devices to begin with. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, it appears that according to uh, a student, a Form 5 student, for example, okay, um the idea is like this and like that okay and then maybe you want to use one advantage is another advantage is and maybe you want to use the word furthermore in addition right and then lastly you go to your your you come up with a recommendation okay uh to come up with a recommendation maybe you want to start with these phrases right all things considered i would like to recommend that or it is recommend that it is recommended that right and then i would recommend or i would suggest that the co-curricular day be held in the field or co-curricular day be held in the hall right based on the findings of the survey it is recommended that blah 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 okay so this is the structure of a report and all right Please remember, this is also to, um, what do you call, um, respond to communicative achievement also. For a report, your language must be formal. And use passive voice. A lot of passive voice, not all, not all sentences are of passive voice, but you use passive voice, ayat passive, like this one. The report is based on, this is our 
you don't say I want to report. Uh, you don't say like that. Okay, this report is based on this report is intended. Uh, so of course, in the formal writing, you don't use contractions. All right, you use contractions only in the email. The rest are all formal writing. So don't use contractions. Contractions means like this. Uh, I you contract. Okay, don't. Okay, so you don't use you don't use this. Okay, and then okay the what do you call um. um the format in terms of uh, the layout okay so um the layout of a form of a report is like this okay to principal right and then from who the writer this is uh, the person who receives your report right and then this is the writer okay you write the date and this is the most important thing is the not to say the most important is uh, the the mass uh, uh, sorry the compulsory element that you have to write in a report is the title report on the survey on co curricular day venue this is a suggestion from me okay or you you don't have to have the word report on it's okay it's correct already the survey on a, or the findings of the survey of something uh all right or you can write this way this is also another layout okay um two principal report on the survey on co-curricular day venue and then write your ideas here okay all the paragraph two paragraph three paragraph four here and then lastly you close your report by writing reported by your name and then write the date so this looks like a real report and this also help you to achieve the communicative uh, uh, task um, given to you effectively all right okay so i hope you understand um, the content of your report what should you write how to um, address the tasks, the advantages, the recommendation. If you mentioned, okay, so this one, okay, last one, okay. Okay, this and this, sorry, one more. Okay, point number one, task one, task two, task three. This is task one and two because there are two actually, two venues, right? So when you are able to respond to all these three tasks your content is five upon five all right okay so now okay done with a report so we go to the last one review okay the review Okay, so review, maybe you are given questions on a movie review, a place, maybe place, uh, maybe uh, something like a popular destination, a food, okay, maybe food, um, restaurant, uh, a review on, uh, on a restaurant, or maybe a review on food at a restaurant, okay, review on music. Or a book review right so you have about five here this is just my uh, suggestions all right okay how to structure a movie review so i just take one a movie review so in order for you to achieve ca you have to know how to write a review either on movie or place or food or music or book okay with the correct conventions of writing a review so you have to study first you have to know first how people write a review all right you cannot just write the way you want there are conventions of writing these reviews all right for example what are they okay for a movie right you should start of course usually okay you should start with an introduction all right and then you have the summary of the story of the movie okay and then you have analysis of the movie and then you give your own opinion and you give the conclusion 
All right. So in this part, for introduction, in this part, you need to provide some general information about the picture. The picture means the movie, yeah? Okay. And, okay, so what are they? You mentioned about the title, the release date, the main actors, the filmmakers, film company, and film filming budget. So you have to have all this knowledge first in order for you to write an introduction. All right. And then number two, the summary. This is a short exposition of the movie plot, the characters, who are the characters, and how the characters interact with each other, their interaction. And and as this is very important because many I think will miss this. All right, will miss this out. All right, analysis of the plot elements is not only about the plot. The plot is here. This is the plot. This is the movie plot. But now is analyzing the movie plot. Okay, so you should mention about the starting point, the rising action, and the climax of the movie, of the story, okay? Analysis of creative elements. Maybe you want to mention about the characters, the development of the characters. It's not only the characters, but the development also, all right? So if you have the development of the characters mentioned, you um, actually analyze, okay? this element in this uh, in the movie okay the dialogues you analyze the dialogues and so on and so forth all right and then number three analysis of the topic and its implementation the topic is like the subject all right the subject matter okay what is it all about is about um is about war for example all right Okay, viewers understanding of the topic, relevance of the topic and comparison with other resembling works. Okay, if you have the knowledge of other movie, right, you can compare, you make comparisons, okay, between this movie that you are reviewing with other movies that you have watched before. Which one is better? Which one um, deal with the topic better? All right, for example, war and the fourth one is opinion, your point of view supported with examples and facts from the story. So you have to give your own point of view. What are your opinions about the movie? Okay. And the conclusion announce whether the filmmaker was successful, okay, in his or her purpose. Explain how the picture was helpful in providing a deeper understanding of the course topic. Right, that's your conclusion, and maybe you can rate the rate the movie. Right, you can give stars. Right, or maybe you can give uh, how many out of ten? Okay, so you rate the movie. Okay, so the writing booklet. All right, talking about this, I don't know what time is it now. Okay, um, I will refer to writing booklet. Uh, your teachers also have this actually. Um, sorry. Okay, I just want to show you the commentary on the one of the samples here. Samples movie here okay all right okay this is a commentary on a sample essay in this booklet, the writing booklet. Your teacher has this. Maybe your teacher has already um, shared this with you. I'm not so sure. Or maybe if um, he or she hasn't, maybe later you can um, discuss with your teacher. All right. So that you can see the sample, the correct sample uh, essays on a, a movie review. So I just want to highlight this. All right. Why does this student get a three right it looks good actually i don't want to read 
the 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 movie review because it's going to take time but i just want to highlight something is not right because it's given three here okay the conventions of a review such as language of description and recommendation are used to communicate straightforward ideas and to hold the target's readers attention so that means this particular student um, knows how to use the right language uh, in writing a review of a movie. However, 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 uh, some plot elements are described in specific detail rather than analyzed and evaluated. So you cannot write, uh, for example, the plot in detail. You are not retelling the story. You just write the summary of the plot. But what you have to do later is to analyze, okay, this um, uh, review, okay, review uh, of anything, okay, should involve a lot of uh, analysis and evaluation, okay? This is high level of uh, hots, actually, the K, but, yeah? Okay, for example, uh, this person, right, the first thing why I enjoyed the movie is the movie concept, blah, blah, blah. Second, the storyline, why the storyline, okay, uh, talk about themes, the colors. Okay, so these are just uh, what you call, um, sorry, this one, the language description. Um, this person knows how to use movie concept, know how to use the word storyline, know how to use the word themes and then the colors and all. But, um um however yeah the students write in specific details about the plot actually yeah so it is not good so he's given a three here it's not five even though at one look it looks good actually yeah nampak macam bagus kita tengoklah sikit um Okay, this is very long, but this person got only three for it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, this is a story of Pi, Life of Pi. So, it's a long uh, review, very long review. Looks good. Okay. But he only gets three marks for the communicative achievement because he dwells too much on the plot. Something like that. All right. So, okay, back to my slide. Okay, done with the review. Okay, so what else here? All right. Okay, last one. This is the last one, if I'm mistaken. Okay, part three, assessment scale for language. Okay, uh, I've already mentioned the assessment scale for uh, uh, organization, language, and content. Uh, sorry, content. Uh, communicative achievement and organization. So this is the last part. It's the language, the grammar, the vocab and all. All right. I want to mention a bit on this. Okay. Towards the end. All right. So um, how to score five here? How to score five uses a range of vocabulary, including less common lexis appropriately less common lexis i show you after this what they are okay uses a range of simple and complex grammatical forms with control and flexibility occasional errors and slips may be present so a few errors only okay a few errors all right okay and then three this is part three yeah? is the most difficult part okay uses a range of everyday vocabulary with occasional sekali sekala ada less common lexis okay perkataan yang jarang digunakan less common lexis okay uses a range of simple and some complex grammatical forms with a good degree of control errors do not impede communication so the meaning is still there the meaning is not impeded all right and then last one is score one uses basic vocabulary appropriately if you use the basic vocabulary it has to be correct all right then only you get one uses simple grammatical forms with a good degree of control so grammar um bagus still bagus okay um using basic vocabulary while errors are noticeable meaning can still be determined so if there's no meaning let's say there's no meaning so 
what score can it be? It can be a zero here. This is for part three. Maybe a candidate score uh, three marks for language in part one or two marks for language in part two, but maybe for part three is a zero or one only. Okay, because in order for you to get three marks here, you have to attempt to use less common lexis. So what are they actually? Okay, for example, today is a very sunny day. So today is a very sunny day is an everyday vocabulary. This is everyday vocabulary. So uh, to replace very sunny day, you can use blistering. This is less common lexis or sweltering. Today is a blistering day. Today is a sweltering day. So this is an example of less common like this. Yeah. All right. So shall we take a look at sample introduction of the answer to the TOB test question television show review. Okay. So if you're looking for an inspirational television show, I would recommend you to watch Cloud series on Disney. Okay, so the first sentence show that these students know how to use the language, the description, uh, sorry, the language of description in writing a review, all right? Okay, using the word recommend, using the word inspirational television show. Okay, this show is actually a sequence from its movie, which directed and produced by Justin Boldoni. Clouds is a story about a young boy named Zach Sobiek who suffered from bone cancer, but still want to fight for his life. This based on true story show is really heartwarming and suitable to watch for everyone. Believe me, you won't be able to take your eyes off the television when you watch this show. This looks like uh, what you call um, uh, for this particular paragraph. Yeah, For this particular paragraph, CA can be a 4. Okay, for this particular paragraph, but it's not fair for me to, you know, like actually give a four here because we you, you don't see the rest of the paragraph. But then basically on this, it looks like a four. All right. Okay, so look at the grammar. So we're talking about language here, the grammar. If you're looking for an inspir inspirational television show, I would recommend you to watch Cloud Series on Disney Plus. Okay, this is correct. The sentence is correct and she used the word inspirational which is uh, not an everyday uh, sorry it's not an everyday vocabulary is quite less common like this okay and it is suitable to use in this essay this show is actually a sequence okay good because this got to do with the uh, a review the language that is used in a review from its movie which is directed and produced by Justin Boldoni. So one mistake here. Clouds is a story about a young boy named Zach Sobiak who suffered from bone cancer but still wants to fight for his life. This based on true story show is really. So this is a subject. So how do you make it a subject? This Oh, sorry, not this one. Okay, base, um, base on true story show. Okay, this base on true story show. Okay, you put a uh, hyphen here. They should be hyphenated to make it an adjective, to make it into an adjective. Okay, this base on true story show is really heartwarming and suitable to watch for everyone. So heartwarming, okay. It's not really an everyday word. It's like um, it can be an everyday word, but it's correctly used here um, uh, to to write in a review, okay. And suitable to watch for everyone. Believe me, you won't be able to take your eyes off the television when you watch this show, okay. So this is the introduction, All right? This CA can be four, All right? What about the language, okay? Language is a three because there are mistakes there but the attempt to use less common like this is there okay so the language is three 
Oh, okay. I think that's all. That's about it. What time is it now? Okay, 1202. So uh, I'm done actually. Uh, it's just I thought I was able to um, entertain you with your questions, actually, to answer your questions if there are. So, Miss Nuru? Yes, Wa Maheran? Okay, so it's 1202, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just I couldn't get to see the time. All right, it's just I just click on my hand for just now so it's like this okay basically i'm done with everything um it looks like i think like maybe we have some of the time to go on with the rest actually we don't really have enough time all right to uh, entertain students um with their questions i mean if they have questions um i don't think we have a uh, time to answer them uh no is it Okay, so should I stop now or how? Well, so, so it's like this. Hmm. So it's like this. I conclude. Yeah? I okay. conclude. All right. Okay, so everyone, I hope um, there's too many things to share, actually. I hope you were able to pay attention just now. Or if you were not able to pay attention, you can always rewatch this video later uh, many, many times. All right. Take a look at how we give marks according to the assessment skills and how to answer the um, uh, 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 what you call reading paper, paper one, reading and use of English paper. Okay, and then the writing also. Um, and further exercises can be done, okay, uh, using our module. Um, Mode intervensi pembelajaran. So I thought I was able to share with you uh, what we have in the module, but we don't have enough time for that. So, what is it? Um, so that's it. Or we can have like five more minutes, Miss Nuru. Uh, I think it's okay. <laughs> no, uh, no, I yeah, like right. this one here. It says that it's really clear. The live note scribbling on the screen help us to understand better. So I guess, uh, you know, uh, for Mahira, you can read the comments later. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, yeah. if they have any questions regarding the module you just shared just then, I think they can yeah. ask the teachers uh, for more explanation. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. All right. So it's like this. Um, I think that's it from me. Mm -hmm. um, um, sorry that I couldn't get to share uh, with you, okay, the students and teachers about the module intervention pembelajaran, but it's there already in school. Um, it's already, I mean, the link has already been sent to school um, uh, through the email, right? Email, okay, so everyone has access to it. Everyone in Terengganu has access to it, including the students, actually, if the teachers share with them. Um, okay, so I think that's about it. Um, uh, I hope I have given something that can help the students. There's <laughs> too many things to share, actually. <laughs> okay, so that's all from me. So um, stay safe. Uh, I mean, stay home and stay safe, everyone. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.